Just as a book can show you different worlds and new perspectives, so can a good teacher open their students' eyes to see new opportunities and talents the student never knew they possessed, all while miraculously teaching the quadratic formula. Hello and welcome to KIXE's sixth annual Big Education event. I'm your host, Jesse Angelo, and for the next half hour, I get the privilege of introducing you to five teachers who are working each day to challenge and inspire their students. Our first classroom is in Red Bluff and belongs to ag teacher and FFA advisor Morgan Brock at Mercy High School. Agriculture is big business in Red Bluff and the town boasts the largest three-day rodeo in the country. It is also home to Mercy High School, who up until just a few years ago didn't have an FFA program. But now, thanks to the efforts of teacher Morgan Brock, the club is flourishing and with approximately 30% of the student body participating. So for a year I taught ag here, just trying to get buy-in. Can I get these freshmen to want this program? Um, and then after that, there was this huge, we want it. So it's grown very quickly. Um, year two when I was here, I went from one class to three. Um, year three, I went from three to five, and I currently still have five. I think the reason that this has been such a positive program here is we are in Tehama County where agriculture is key to making pretty much everything roll. And so a lot of my students have at least some sort of ag background, but those who don't find the use in it every day. Part of the job of an ag teacher and FFA advisor is helping students get their animals ready for the fair, which can sometimes mean taking frantic late night phone calls. I remember one time I was frantic because my lamb got a cut on its shoulder and I was calling Miss Brock in the middle of the night and she, she answered the phone and was able to walk me through it, how I had to glue the shoulder or glue the skin back together and it, it just, she's been a, a super, a super big part of our FFA group. Uh, she takes the weekends to go check on their projects and their animals when, the, when it comes to fair time. That's just like a week of 24-7 for her. And the kids depend on her, you know, they need that support. Spending all that extra time together has allowed Mrs. Brock to become a mentor and friend to her students. But Morgan has that very good balance of being both a mentor, um, a guide, a confidant, uh, professional, but also always there for the kids. So um, she's no nonsense. I think the students know that in her classes she's rigorous. They have to uh, perform up to her expectations, but she's there to support them and she's there to help them every step of the way. So she maintains a really good balance in that relationship. She's, she's really funny for sure, uh, but she's also a very, a very strict teacher. You don't want to get on her bad side, but I think that's also a good quality of hers is that she's not going to take anything from anybody, but she's going to be there for you when you need her. Yeah, Miss Brock is, yeah, she treats us all like family. The, uh, the FFA group is a big family, especially the officer team. Tommy and I are both a part of the officer, officer team, and um, we're just super close. And Miss Brock is kind of like our mother duck. <laughs> she kind of she kind of herds us around, and it's, it's, it's just, it's really nice being a part of something like that. If you're looking at a school atmosphere and looking at what a teacher can do, knowing your students on a personal level makes a huge difference in your ability to teach them. If you know that they don't do well on tests, but they know the information, you can hear them talking about it in class. Knowing that allows you to adjust and help that student be productive and make them a better student, teach them how to take a test so that, that anxiety and those things go away. And I feel like as a teacher, that's one thing that Mercy really strives for is to help the students be successful. For Mrs. Brock, teaching agriculture and leading FFA is the fulfillment of a dream that started when she herself was in high school. For me, agriculture has been a lifetime thing. Um, I have shown 4-H and FFA since I was six. Um, my parents live on a small farm in Gridley, so We've got walnuts and a little bit of acreage at home to build that interest. And I knew from a young age I wanted to teach, but in high school I had a student teacher, actually, as a freshman, who she was amazing. Just totally built my interest in agriculture and the industry and FFA. And as soon as 
I was in her class, I knew that I wanted to teach ag, not just be a teacher. And my mom laughed at me. She was like, yeah, 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 we'll see. And when you go to college, we'll see if that's what you end up with. And when I graduated, she's like, all right, you win. <laughs> teacher that makes house calls? Now that's dedication. Thank you, Mrs. Brock, for inspiring your students and showing them that they can achieve their childhood dreams too. Now let's hop on Highway 99 to Inspire School of the Arts and Sciences in Chico, where we meet English teacher and published poet, Danielle Alexich. In each of her lessons, English teacher Danielle Alexich is striving to teach her students much more than just how to write an essay or who wrote the classics. She wants them to understand the incredible power of the written word to change lives. I really try not to teach anything that can't be applied to their lives, to the greater world. And I think literature really gives us a window into human experience and conflict and trying to resolve those conflicts. So, and as far as the poetry piece, I invite students to take a really close look at language. And one of the things about poetry that I love, and one of the things about studying poetry that I love, is it forces us to take a close look at language. And poets, every word is a deliberate choice. Every punctuation mark is a deliberate choice. And if students can take a look at language that closely, I believe that that experience translates into their essay writing as well. And they can communicate with impact and a heartbeat. I think being a poet herself, first of all, connects her to the world in ways that are reflective and uh, compassionate and, and gives, and her passion for that language really translates to students. I think that's a big part of it, but it's also her understanding of the power of language and as an art form and how it can impact the world and how she can she helps students understand that what, that when they write and when they express themselves how important that is to, to, to their communities and to the world. Yeah I help them be more productive better human beings. Um, yeah the heartbeat element in literature is really important to me and in in their writing but also the critical thinking. Um, I really encourage students to well, for example, one of the essays we do in their senior year is a perspective essay. It's not an argument essay. I always tell my students, argument has clearly not gotten our culture very far. And so what they do with the perspective essay is they uh, are asked to invite readers to think more deeply and sensitively about a topic. That's their goal. And if they can do that, then that's fine. Of course, they have to support what they say, but it's not about changing somebody's mind. And I think that's true of life too. We a lot of times hear that cognitive dissonance is a bad thing and it gives, causes mental unrest, like you smoke even though you know it gives you cancer and somehow you have to do something to decrease that dissonance. Where I'm not so sure all the time that when it comes to learning that that dissonance isn't a positive thing. Just like in music, sometimes those, that dissonant chord is really kind of the coolest part of the, the music piece. And it's okay to hold two opposing ideas in your head at one time. We do it all the time. We do it with our relationships. Wow, I really love this person in my family, even though this person in my family has political beliefs completely different than mine. It doesn't mean I can't see both sides. So they do that. I try to encourage them to do that with their writing and their thinking and their discussions. Seeing both sides of a situation and seeking deeper understanding of others is something Miss Alexich believes can be taught through great art and literature. Okay, you can, read an, you can read a newspaper article about the war and find out how many people, how many casualties there were, there were and maybe some of the strategies or maybe not. But as far as that deep experience, you'd have to read a poem like Dolce et Decorum Est, Wilfred Owen, where you really get the feel of what it's like to carry your friend who's dying in your arms on the battlefield. And so there's something about literature that mirrors that deeper experience and feeling. I know this sounds kind of emo and touchy-feely, but I, 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 I'm not, it isn't really. It, because good art does that to us. It stirs that up in us and so that we feel it and we think about it. I think when Danielle teaches, I think that because she's in touch with, through her writing with the world, I think she brings the students uh, um, 
a, a way of reflecting. She shows them how she reflects about things. I think sometimes people make t quick judgments about things, but I think Danielle, because she's such a reflective person and because she writes and uses writing to do that through her poetry and other ways, I think she shows kids that they're, they need to think from all different perspectives and they need to bring all those perspectives to bear on their experience. Yeah, it's, I just like to pull those threads. I like my students too, and they do. They do, they're great at it. Ms. Alexich, it is your inspiring and empathetic example that inspires those students to pull those strings and become critical thinkers for the rest of their lives. Now, from graduating high school seniors to five-year-olds just starting out on their educational journey, let's visit the classroom of kindergarten teacher Kareen Aberg, where today they're learning about wind. From the time she was in the fourth grade, Corrine Aberg knew she wanted to be a teacher. As a kindergarten teacher at Chrysalis Charter School, she's been able to create a bright and curiosity-driven classroom, inspired by her fourth grade teacher and a certain PBS character. So I love the Magic School Bus, the, the series of books and now videos, and Miss Frizzle wears outfits to match all of the things she's teaching. I grew up doing um, sewing with my grandmother, and it was my favorite thing to do, so I was constantly making clothes and um, sewing with her. And so I decided, okay, I love Miss Frizzle. I love making my own clothes. I'm going to do what Miss Frizzle does. So I make skirts for every unit that we do. So today we are learning about air and wind. So I'm wearing a skirt with hot air balloons and things like that. Miss Kareen is one of those out of the box teachers and we love out of the box and somebody that does not fit the traditional mold. Um, I think of her kind of like Miss Frizzle from The Magic School Bus because she dresses to fit her lesson plan. So when they're studying dinosaurs, she'll have dinosaurs on. When they're reading um, Alice in Wonderland, she'll have Alice in Wonderland on. It's pretty amazing. Um, and it allows our kids to start off school here knowing that they can be anybody that they want to be, that they don't have to fit the mold, that they can dress different and be different, and that's okay and embraced and loved. Just as Miss Frizzle took her students on wacky adventures in the name of learning something new, Principal Irene Salter says Miss Kareen is able to use hands-on activities and creative lessons to introduce her students to some pretty advanced topics. There's certain ideas in science that are so basic that if you can get them early on, that it carries through to every single grade and every other thing. So today she was talking about molecules, and that's not something that would normally be a, it, something introduced in kindergarten. But she breaks it down that everything is broken down into little bits, and kids can get that. So those very fundamental scientific ideas, she just has the right way of breaking it down so that the kids can really get it, and then can carry it through to everything else that they do. Today I think I use the word molecule with them, it happened to be in a book and so we researched it a little bit and talked a little bit about what a molecule is and how how everything's made of molecules and if five kids understand it and the other 10 15 don't it's okay those five kids learn something new and the others will learn it later but that idea is implanted or implanted in them now and and it'll be a word that later on even if they don't know what it means they'll recognize it and it'll still be there so um, so we do use a lot of big vocabulary even if they don't necessarily totally get the concept. Corrine teaches all subjects, but her real passion lies in helping them understand the patterns and cycles that are all around them. Whether it is the life cycle of a salmon, the patterns on a calendar, or even using Oreos to help them understand the cycles of the moon. Um, once we were learning about the moon and how we did it is we had like Oreo cookies and we would take off the top and then we would show like a crescent and a whole moon and it was super fun. When we do our space unit, that one's all out for me. Like, that is the one for me. If I didn't have issues with dizziness, I would have been an astronaut. <laughs> so, um, so our space unit is definitely lots of fun. From designing lesson-themed clothes to transforming her classroom into a lunar landscape, everything Ms. Kareen does for her students comes straight from her heart. And that's something that hasn't gone unnoticed by her students. Um, and Ms. Kareen was probably one of my favorite teachers. She was always really good with science and math 
she was my first grade teacher and she always made something better. If you're having a bad day, she would always cheer you up and um, she would always make a really good way of reading. She'd find good books, small little books that you could take home. I still have them actually. She taught us like working together and uh, playing together and disc not discluding people. Funny, kind, creative and you just don't know what to expect. It's always great. Um, cause she's like caring and she never ever is mean. She's like always kind and she likes to share her stuff with other teachers a lot. And she's just, I don't know, she's just wonderful. I wonder if Miss Kareem would make me a bee outfit for next year's big education event. I'll start looking for fabric. Thank you, Miss Kareem, for giving your students a firm foundation in both knowledge and kindness. A firm and stable foundation is one of the things our next teacher, Mr. Anthony Sanzoni, strives to give his students at Honey Wren Academy in Paradise. Students may take many roads to get to Honey Run Academy. Some are there from suspensions, others because of homelessness. Regardless of why they are there, when they walk into Mr. Anthony Sanzoni's class, he wants them to know they are not alone. I grew up with a lot of problems in my life, making bad decisions when I was a teenager, and I knew that that didn't make me a bad person. And I wanted to let kids know that it's okay to make mistakes and that they can still be successful. And a lot of kids make mistakes and end up letting those mistakes ruin their educational career. And I really wanted to be the person for those kids to let them know that just because they made a mistake in a school and may have gotten kicked out and expelled or suspended, that that didn't mean that they were a bad student and that they could still make things right and turn it around and be that successful person. It's fun to see his relationship grow with students. Um, students walk in with a chip on their shoulder. They don't wanna be here um, for whatever circumstance. And then when it's time for them to leave, they don't want to leave. He was the first teacher that actually tried to like talk to me and try to like help me out and fix my situation and get my life together. And now I'm a 4.0 student and I came from having straight F's and he really helped me like get on track. I'm, if I stay on track, I'll graduate with over 20 extra credits because I'm transferring down to Chico High School. Just like Faith, each student at the school has specific and complex needs and Mr. Sanzoni takes it upon himself to examine each situation carefully and meet the students right where they are. And then when they enter into the classroom, the first couple things that they see are very nurturing items. They see a rocking chair, they see a bookshelf, they see a comforting environment, and, um, and a few odd different things. Um, Anthony built two stand-up desks. We had a student uh, when he first uh, arrived at Honey Run as a teacher who was, towered over 6'5", and was well over 200 pounds and could not successfully sit in a tiny little desk. And so he built two stand-up desks. Yeah, so a lot of my students struggle with their self-image and self-worth. Um, a lot of them are coming from a place where they haven't had anyone tell them that they're worthy of anything or have actually had adults tell them that they are not worthy. and. I really just try to find something that each student is good at. And I mention that to them every single day. And I find instances when they're performing well and I say, look, you are good at that. And, and if there's something negative about them, I don't bring it up. Um, Cause I just try to focus on the positive. And so when they keep hearing that day in and day out that you're good at something, then they start to appreciate that and they start to realize that they are good at it and that builds their self-worth. It's complete radical transformation. I mean, not even the same kids. You'll see kids um, actually change haircuts while they're here, um, change the way they dress. Um, they're changing their identity, you know, from what they 
were before at previous school and how they want to be in the future. And so this is a good transition for them to kind of make that morph and change in a safe environment where they're not going to be judged. Um, and Sanzoni just helps to support them the whole way and doesn't make them uncomfortable, doesn't, you know, point out the change. Um, you know, we all just kind of go with it and support the whole time. Learning from like him being in his class that everybody has something going on. So like just like treat everybody like normal. <laughs> Don't treat them any differently because there's a lot of different people at this school and everybody at the school has something completely different and bad or whatever going on in their lives. Wherever the students have come from and whatever it is that they are going through, there is one thing they can be sure of. There is a teacher who sees their potential and believes they have the capacity to reach it. Uh, I get to work with kids who have had trouble in their past, but they want to show people that they are not just the kid that got kicked out of school. They want to show people that they have something to offer to their school, to their, um, to their community. They want to be that person, and this is the place where they get to turn it around and show us that that's who they can be. Mr. Sanzoni, the work you are doing along with the staff at Honey Run Academy is changing lives. Thank you so much for the care and dedication you show to these students. All right, you ready for our last stop? We're heading to Tehama County in the classroom of Katie Tennyson, at Los Molinos High School. It's not difficult to see the impact teacher Katie Tennyson has had on Los Molinos High School. All you have to do is walk behind the main school buildings and you'll discover a new greenhouse, stalls for FFA animals, and of course, the rabbit barn. Students are always working on something around here. We are a 24 hour um, moving wheel apparently <laughs> and uh, part of my position too I'm, I'm a unique position most teachers are nine months or ten months I'm a 12 month employee so I'm here year-round and we have um, the farm that we've started out out back and we have our newly established rabbit barn and that literally started from one student who had an interest in rabbits and my brain took it to the entire next level so now we have a full breeding operation out there um, we've got about 23 three babies in the hutch right now, which is really exciting for us. And we use those rabbits not only for fair, um, we sell the fryers for meat, and then the students get to do really cool genetics projects with them. In addition to that, we have our other livestock projects that happen more in the springtime. I'm the swine and rabbit advisor, so come end of March, beginning of April, I'll have about 40 hogs at the barn. Yeah, in a community like Los Molinos, agriculture is the main, it's the main focus of this community. Um, and so to have a program as strong as, as this program is, is very important um, to, um, because we're, we're really, uh, we're providing uh, the future of agriculture in our area and actually the whole state. Creating leaders and preparing her students for the future is at the heart of each lesson Miss Tennyson teaches. Uh, I have a saying on my website, the curriculum is minor, it's the life I watch you lead that's the most important and that truly is you know, my motto for, for teaching and, you know, I, I want to see them successful and I want to see them grow and benefit and, and be good people more than anything. Yes, uh, the students learn a lot more than ag. Ag is, is something that brings them together, but really they are learning organizational skills. They are learning to be leaders. They are learning to have confidence and speak in public and they are learning to build relationships. And so uh, there's a lot more to uh, FFA than just the actual uh, material agriculture. Ms. Tennyson is an amazing FFA advisor because she makes us feel like it's our second home away from home. She makes us feel like we can do things that we're normally not comfortable doing and get, like helps us get out of our comfort zone. And it's a big step for me, because normally I wouldn't be able to do it on my own. To have a teacher like Ms. Tennyson believe in me, it really boosts my confidence by not only being at school, but outside of school as well. I've never had the confidence to be able to speak in front of people. And with her guiding me, I've been able to run for chapter office in my chapter at Los Molinos High School. And I really 
feel more comfortable when I'm speaking to other people. <laughs> and I think that it, like she's helped prepare me for getting a job and going to college next year. And she's really helped me apply to college and you know, look for a job and go outside and act like a decent person. By putting in the extra hours, driving students to competitions, and caring for the various animals on campus all year round, Miss Tennyson says she is carrying on the legacy of her high school FFA advisor. Now that I, I look back on my experience in, you know, when I was in FFA, the amount of things that my ag teacher did for me, it's, you know, it's hard to fathom how he got from point A to point B without MapQuest or Google Maps or <laughs> without getting lost in the amount of weekends that he spent with me rather than his own children or away from his family. And so to be able to kind of relive that experience and give that um, opportunity to my students is incredibly rewarding. And you know, to see them grow and to see them succeed is basically what the job is, is for. Having Miss Tennyson for an FFA advisor has been so inspiring for one student in particular that after graduation, she hopes to follow in her beloved teacher's footsteps. After high school, I plan to attend Humboldt State University. I recently got accepted and I plan to major in environmental studies. And with the help of Ms. Tennyson, I was able to apply there and get accepted as well. And I hope to follow in her footsteps because she is a former lumberjack. And I hope to graduate with my major in environmental studies and further my career into the credential program to become a teacher. I hope to take every lesson that I've learned from Ms. Tennyson and bring it forth to my own students someday. She's taught me how to be friendly and how to be nice to people and respectable. And I just, the tone that she sets for her classroom is something that I aspire to have. And I really want to be just half of the person that she is today. And I really want to make her proud, especially. Do you think they have room for me on one of those FFA trips? That'd be a lot of fun. And thank you, Ms. Tennyson, for inspiring the next generation of teachers and for taking care of all of those rabbits. All of the teachers honored tonight were selected by a committee of community members from a large number of nominations during our open nomination period last fall. For information on how you can nominate someone for next year's big education event, more information will be available on the KIXE website at the beginning of the next school year. From all of us at KIXE, thank you for traveling with us to all of these amazing schools and thank you to the teachers who pour their hearts into their classrooms and their students. It's our honor to be able to honor you. Thank you. Good night.